controversy involved in that? Sometimes not so much. This year, I think not so much. Efforts to support our shared marketplace by joining retailers, vendors, and reps together in search of shared benefits reflects ASRA's mission. It also reflects the history of this year's Lifetime Achievement Award recipients. Two women who have made significant contributions to ASTRA and to the specialty toy market as a whole, initially independently and then more recently in a cooperative venture. Before entering the toy business, one of these women spent 10 years in New York, first as an executive secretary and then working in marketing. According to her, he was a little bit like being in Mad Men, which of course, since I do watch Mad Men, makes me wonder, so is she a Peggy? Or is she more of a Joan? <laughs> and I've danced with this woman, so I, I'm going with the Joan. <laughs> the other started out with a business degree and quickly became an independent toy entrepreneur who still found time, and still does find time, to volunteer both within Astra and among fellow retailers who are pursuing cooperative marketing efforts. The stores they ran independently, but successfully, opened in 1976 and 1983, respectively. They embarked on their current toy adventure in 1999. Both have consistently raised their hands, sharing advice and support with their colleagues and competitors up and down the supply chain. Together, their efforts have supported independent retailers as well as specialty toy vendors and reps during a time that we all know has seen rapid change in our marketplace. In choosing to name both of them as recipients of Astra's Lifetime Achievement Award, we acknowledge them each individually as amazingly hardworking, creative, and generous people, while recognizing the work they have done and continue to do together. So it's with a smile and great pleasure that I, I would encourage you to just leave your clickers on the table, but get your hands ready and be ready to jump up and welcome two women I personally view as grand dames or great ladies of the toy industry. The Good Toy Group's Executive Director and Managing Director, Terry Gannon and Idana Smith. special award and I shall cherish it. Let me give you a glimpse of the history, my history, in the toy industry. At Christmas time, 1975, I started to look for a dollhouse for my daughter, Julie Gannon Ritchie, whom many of you here know. We lived in a small sea town coast of 5,000 people, an hour south of Boston, an hour north of Providence. I finally found a stationery store in Providence they had a handful of homemade dollhouses and a few other toys on their lower floor. Madame Alexander dolls, interesting games, and some small trikes. There was no dollhouse furniture there, so we went to Boston and finally found some. After the holidays were over, I suggested to my husband that perhaps I should open a toy store. He looked at me with utter disbelief and he said, have you ever been in retail? And I said, no, but how hard can that be? <laughs> I think I was a little naive. 
Well, I opened my 900 square foot store in the spring of 1976. That eventually grew to three stores. Anyway, I went to New York with the ink hardly dry on my business cards. Toy Fair in those days consisted of two large, male-dominated, cigar-smoke-infested buildings on 18th Street and Broadway. And actually, as my daughter reminded you, you couldn't even get into some of the showrooms. They didn't want to see you, which I thought was interesting. In addition, there were exhibits in the various hotel ballrooms throughout the city. But remember, no Javits Center, no telephones. We only had, you know, the uh, telephone booths, so there was no communication. And it was really a whole week of Toy Fair, full week of Toy Fair. My store, the Toy Box, <clears throat> was located about a half a block from the elementary school. And once we became established with the parents, we often had children who stopped in after school just to see what was new, to shop, to play games, and play with our toys. Most of these children and parents had never ever seen many of the items we carried. Lots of games, wonderful small metal soldiers from the Civil War, the Revolutionary War, and other wars, beautiful wooden blocks especially, and who of course ever heard of wooden trains? When our Brio trains arrived, they came, there was such excitement to think that a child could actually build track and push the train around. I mean, unheard of. I love the interaction we were able to have with the local children. They would come in with their saved money, and we'd help them count it out. We'd help them shop. They'd count out their money, and if they were a bit short, we would write out an IOU, and we'd give one copy to them to take home, and one copy went into our cash drop. No cash register then either, by the way. Uh, <clears throat> we occasionally caught a child stealing, and when that happened, we'd bring them into the store, and or into the office, and sit down and chat about it, and then say, if this is fine, and we won't say anything about it, but if it happens again, we're going to call your parents. Then that seemed to solve the problem pretty well. I was asked by a local school to give a talk about running a toy store. So I chose the fourth grade as a good age group for comprehension. I decided to use Brio trains as my basic subject of <clears throat> buying the product, starting with cutting down the trees in Sweden, and then finally having it all arrive in my store and the costs involved each step of the way. They couldn't understand why I had to create a retail price. So when we got to the heat, so then I got to the heat, the electricity, the salary, the rent, and so forth, and I, you know, I think they finally got, they got it, they got the picture. Through all these years, I really wasn't as much profit-oriented as I was just being, just thrilled to be able to bring all these great joys to the children of my community and have such a wonderful interaction with them, and it was really a lot of fun. Actually, I was a little casual. If I was playing tennis in the morning, I'd stick a note on my door and say, sorry, not opening until 10.30, I've got a tennis game. <laughs> but I like to feel that this was just as special for them as it is, was for me. Then along came Astra in 1992, and another whole world opened up. Their annual convention brought together toy people, retailers, vendors, and reps. And my isolation as a toy store owner ended. There were wonderful seminars, workshops, networking, and year after year, we could see Astra grow, and we were able to grow with it. Early on, Astra was able to draw in people like myself to discuss, think, and envision what the industry could become. In 1999, several of us realized we needed a holiday catalog, and due to our contacts through Astra, we were able to pull together 21 stores for an initial meeting. Because of the standards set by Astra, we had a firm idea of what cooperation between the stores meant. And the pattern was set for us to create a catalog company called The Good Toy Group. Starting The Good Toy Group was hard work. No, that's wrong. It was very hard work. A lot of time, a lot of energy. But because of the Astra model, we could envision starting a new business supporting independence, and so we took on the challenge. We had a working board of directors, all fiercely independent, and we had to bring them together and make sure that they could see a shared vision for the future that was beneficial to the member stores, the industry, 
and the association. And then they in turn had to go forth and work on getting stores to join us and the vendors to believe in us. Each of us had an area of responsibility when we first started and Idana became the board chairperson. I believe Idana's original job was in charge of trucking. Not too interesting, but that still makes me <laughs> smile. Since I was retired, I took on the job of setting up the company, pretty much all the systems. On the other hand, without Idana's vision, the Good Toy Group would not be where it is today. Probably the most important decision that we made was to become a member-owned organization. As a result, we have a board of directors and a product committee and a new game committee, all member stores. We have never swayed away from our original mission statement, that is, to unite the finest independent toy stores in America in a cooperative venture to market creative, culturally sensitive, constructive playthings that promote happy, healthy childhoods. Every time one of our catalogs goes into the hands of a child, we feel that we are remaining very true to that mission statement. Through this journey, I formed some wonderful friendships, but most especially with Idana. We have really grown this group together, we have become very close friends, and it has been a great experience. Thank you, Astor, for this wonderful tribute. Oops. Good morning, and thank you uh, from the bottom of my heart. Can you see me? <laughs> Being, uh, living in the Boston area, um, we have recently, since the bombing happened in Boston, talked about the people who are survivors uh, from that attack as heroes. And this morning I was thinking, heroes, heroes are people who enlighten your path and guide you on your path. And I have two heroes, my husband and Terry. She is a hero to me. So I thought when I got this and I had to think about standing up and talking to you, I thought, well, I've worked for the last 13 years in words and images. And I thought, I know what I'll do. I'll use words and I'll ask you to use your own imagination for what those, those words might mean to you. And so I thought, well, then I've got to get very organized and I'll make a spreadsheet. <laughs> And I'll make sure I have A to Z. And then it dawned on me that crying and drinking would come long before teamwork and motivation. <laughs> <laughs> and we have done the crying and the drinking. So I thought, I don't think that's going to work. So these are some words that come to me when I think of my life, which I, I don't think of it as a lifetime achievement, but I think each day you struggle, you work to achieve what you can be the best of on that day. So I invite you to imagine what some of these words mean both to you and have meant to me. Family, friends, children, success, failure, imagination, inspiration, creativity, Laughter, laughing until you cry, laughing until you have to go to the bathroom, <laughs> asking someone to stop laughing because you can't laugh any harder. <laughs> Conflict, hard work, compromise, collaborating with people, enthusiasm, passion, children, 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 Education, Astra. Astra has been a, an enormous part of my life through the toy business. So many wonderful people, a journey, a path, failure, 
And I say that twice and even three times because I have failed at things. We do fail every day. But we get up and start again, and it's that determination. It's the people that you work with, friends, generosity, integrity, connecting, sometimes disconnecting, images, thankfulness, and one other word. My granddaughter and I have a story that we share at bedtime, and I won't tell you the whole story, although it's pretty terrific, and I made it up. <laughs> but when we get to the best part, and I'm telling the story, she'll say, Grandma, don't forget the legs. I go, okay, now we're laying in bed. And then she does this. And my part is to go, and this is how I feel about this whole thing. Ready? Wowzer! <laughs> that is how I feel about every single one of you in the room. Thank you very, very much.